Hi, it's Justin Andrus. I uh, just thought I would give a commentary on this recent Breitbart article titled Jesuit-led parish has parishioners to take pledge affirming quote-unquote white privilege must end. So um, there's video clip on a priest kind of outlining some of these uh, maxims that the congregation is affirming. So let's go ahead and listen to that and then I'm going to address each one of the points. Do you support racial justice, equity, and compassion in, in human relations? Yes. yes. Do you affirm that white privilege is unfair and harmful to those who have it and to those who do not? Yes. yes. Do you affirm that white privilege and the culture of white supremacy must be dismantled wherever it is present? Yes. yes. Do you support racial equity, justice, and liberation for every person? Yes. Do you affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person? Yes. <coughs> Therefore, from this day forward, will you strive to understand more deeply the injustice and suffering white privilege and white supremacy cause? Yes. yes. Will you commit to help transform our church culture to one that is actively engaged in seeking racial justice and equity for all, for everyone? Yes. Will you make a greater effort to treat all people with the same respect you expect to receive? Yes. Will you commit to developing the courage to live your beliefs and values of racial justice and equality? Yes. Will you strive to eliminate racial prejudice from your thoughts and actions so that you can better promote the racial justice efforts of our church? Yes. Will you renew and honor this pledge daily, knowing that our church and our community, our nation and our world will be better places because of our efforts? Yes. yes. Okay. So figure it best just to kind of go through each of these points one by one. Okay. And not all of them are necessarily, actually most of them are, are, are racist, as we'll see, but um, not all of them are. Okay, so take the first point. Do you support justice, equity, and compassion in human relations? Nothing really wrong with that. That's, that's quite biblical uh, throughout the, the, the Bible. So point two, do you affirm that white privilege is unfair and harmful to those who have it and to those who do not? So now you've got the racist card being played, okay, which, of course, is not biblical. Um, we're all one in Christ, right, Jew, Gentile, and all races in between uh, have been unified by the cross. So this is a problem, right? Point three, which is even more problematic, do you affirm that white privilege and the culture of white supremacy must be dismantled wherever it is present, okay? So part of it looks okay, white supremacy, but the problem I see is they are conjoining what they are perceiving as white privilege with the culture of white supremacy, right? So they're, they're essentially combining white privilege and white supremacy into one. So essentially anyone who denies white privilege is a white supremacist. That's how it reads, which is real problematic, but not for the Jesuits as we'll see later. Do you support racial equity, justice, and liberation for every person? Yes, basically saying the same thing as the first point. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Do you affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person? Sure, not a problem. Therefore, from this day forward, will you strive to understand more deeply the injustice and suffering, white privilege, and white supremacy clause? Again, asking for, you know, reaffirming uh, the earlier point on that. Next point, will you commit to help transform our church culture to one that is actively engaged in seeking racial justice and equity for everyone? Again, the church's mission is not social justice, it's the gospel of Christ. Next point, will you make a greater effort to treat all people with the same respect you, you expect to receive? Right, so nothing wrong with that. Like I mentioned, there's a number of these points that they're, they're biblical and, you know, they're good. Next one, will you commit to developing the courage to live your beliefs and values of racial justice and equality? Now, if they stripped racial justice from this, there, it wouldn't be a problem. But again, they're, they're playing the race card. 
Uh, next point, will you strive daily to eliminate racial prejudice from your thoughts and actions so that you can better promote the racial justice efforts of your church? Again, they're, they're race baiting with this statement. And the final one, will you renew and honor this pledge daily, knowing that our church, our community, and our nation, our world will be better places because of my effort, right? So in, in summary, the statements that, that don't have any reference to either social justice, racial justice, white privilege, white supremacy, it's nothing wrong, but since they are, they're conflating these with those, it's, it's problematic because they are essentially putting everyone who doesn't flat out reject white privilege and white supremacy in the same bucket, right? So they're, they're going to demonize you if you don't um, admit to this, in this case, confess to it, okay? Now, this is coming from the Jesuits. Now, the Jesuits have a long history, um, especially from the Reformation. They uh, initiated what's called kind of counter-reformation to the Protestant Reformation. And so they have specific aims and goals, right? Um, so I'm going to read from a, a great book here. You can see the Jesuits, their morals, maxims, and plots against kings, nations, and churches, 1881, by James Atkin Wiley. Um, so this is a book... Uh, totally dedicated to the history of, of Jesuits and their tactics, uh, mainly coming from the um, Counter-Reformation to basically their goal is to undo the Protestant Reformation because of, of what Protestantism did to Roman Catholicism. Um, I'm going to read uh, one specific quote. Their mission, the Jesuits, on which all their efforts were made to concentrate was to quench the liberties of the New Age corrupt the churches of the reformed faith, undermine the thrones of disobedient kings, convulse non-Catholic nations, in short, to break down the world and having broken it down, to build it up again and assume the government of it. Now, we're in a much different climate, both religiously, politically, economically, uh, but their goal is the same, right? So, at the time, this was addressed really to, to kings and because the Roman Catholic Church at the time had much political clout. They had much power over the kings. But now, it's, it's still applied. Only they don't have that same power, right? But they want that clout. So, they're, they're working within the nations, right, in which they're located. And they're, they're essentially, in this case... Um, trying to jump on the bag bandwagon and capitalize on the chaos uh, resulting from Black Lives Matter, Antifa, all this, so they can get greater control um, over the nation, specifically for Catholicism, right? So that's all I wanted to touch on today. I might have some follow-up videos um, on some more of the Jesuit history, how it relates to, to current events, if you're interested. Please comment in the notes in the comment section and let me know. Thank you.